Good afternoon. Madam Minister, Mr. Secretary, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome you to today's press conference uh, of the Minister of Defense of the Czech Republic, Jana Černochová, and uh, the Secretary of Defense of the United States of America, Lloyd James Austin. First, uh, Madam Minister and uh, uh, Mr. Secretary will summarize uh, their uh, negotiations and then we will take four questions. And now let me hand over to uh, Madam Minister. So, Secretary uh, Austin, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank Secretary Austin very warmly for accepting my invitation to come to Prague uh, to the Czech Republic and that uh, he visited uh, at the Ministry of Defense and that we had an opportunity earlier today uh, to visit what is uh, one of the most memorable places of our nation and that is the Church of St. Cyril and Methodius uh, where we pay respect uh, to uh, the memory of our brave soldiers. The United States uh, uh, is our most important ally, and they provide the cornerstone of our collective defense in NATO, uh, as well as uh, uh, they underpin the current effort uh, of uh, the situation in Europe. The massive support that the United States has been providing to Ukraine proves yet again that America is an indispensable leader of the free world, and I would like to thank sincerely to Secretary Austin and to citizens of the United States of America for their continuing willingness of, of to defend uh, free world and to defend Europe. The Czech Republic uh, stands ready to support the U.S. in this effort and we are increasing our uh, defense investment and accelerate the development of our military capabilities including key armament projects. And our goal is to increase uh, the Czech-American defense cooperation to a level higher than ever before and uh, we want to seek specific projects. To that effect, we are negotiating a bilateral defense cooperation agreement, uh, which uh, we have already started uh, during my visit uh, during uh, in Washington, D.C., and uh, uh, to provide for practical cooperation between our armed forces. Today, with Secretary Austin and I have reconfirmed that both sides see this agreement as really important uh, and uh, that it will be soon. And the Czech Republic is one of the top five military suppliers to Ukraine and uh, it is therefore logical that we touched on this topic very strongly, uh, including uh, because uh, the, the discussions we had yesterday in Ramstein, we discussed the options uh, uh, and ways ahead for our nations, uh, for us uh, to uh, again uh, stay united and uh, uh, manage to defeat the aggressor and for Ukraine and this war because it is completely un unprecedented because they were attacked by Russia uh, for Ukraine to um, be victorious. The Czech Republic significantly contributes to the defense of NATO's eastern flank and among other things we lead the NATO multinational battle group in Slovakia where American uh, service personnel are deployed along ours and we need to have a modern well-equipped military and I am very glad uh, to have the United States on our side uh, for uh, the capability development. In conclusion of our meeting, I thanked again Secretary Austin for the donation of eight units of the Venom and Viper helicopters and uh, at what we discussed uh, during my visit in Washington DC that uh, Secretary Austin kept his promise uh, what, uh, on what we outlined uh, back then and uh, we are very uh, grateful on behalf of the government of the Czech Republic uh, that we will have in total 20 units of US helicopters uh, that will strongly reinforce our defense posture. Thank you Secretary Austin. Secretary Austin you have the floor. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, Minister Chernikova, uh, thank you for hosting us here in Prague. 
This is my first visit to the Czech Republic as Secretary of Defense, and it's been a very productive one. I thought it was especially important to be here at this critical time for European security. And I'm honored to be here while the Czech Republic holds the European, European Union presidency. I think that many of you are tracking that the Czech Republic will host NATO days in Ostrava next week, and that's going to be an important opportunity to reinforce the Czech Republic's strong commitment to alliance interoperability. I'm here today because the Czech Republic is a vital NATO ally. And as you've often heard me say, the United States remains steadfast in our commitment to the defense and freedom and sovereignty of our allies. And that's especially important as Russia continues its cruel and unprovoked war of choice against Ukraine. The Ukrainian people are fighting heroically to defend themselves from Russian aggression. And they are rightly demanding to live in freedom and to shape their own future, to not have it be dictated by Russia. Now, the minister and I saw each other yesterday at Ramstein Air Base for the most recent Ukraine defense contact group session. We're all determined to help Ukraine defend itself for the long haul. And nations of goodwill from around the world are standing united in support of Ukraine's right to defend itself, its citizens, and its territory. At the Madrid summit in June, NATO leaders, including President Biden, recognized that Russian aggression is the most significant and direct threat to the security of our allies and to, and to peace and stability in Europe. So today, the minister and I had a highly productive discussion on strengthening our collective defense in response to Russia's reckless aggression. We also discussed our bilateral defense cooperation as well as the Czech Republic's defense modernization work to enhance its interoperability with its NATO allies. And I applaud the Czech Republic's commitment to increase its defense investments and to develop its capabilities. At the same time, NATO is, NATO is strengthening its forward defenses and enhancing its battle groups in the eastern part of the alliance up to brigade level. And the Czech Republic is playing a leading role in that. As you heard the minister say, the Czech Republic is a framework nation for the new NATO battle group in Slovakia. And the Czech Republic is also contributing to NATO missions in Latvia and Lithuania, as well as conducting NATO air policing. Now, I want to be clear that NATO does not seek confrontation with Russia or pose any threat to Russia. But our defensive alliance, as it always has, will protect every inch of NATO territory. And Madam Minister, we both stand in solidarity with the Ukrainian people and their democratically elected government. So we will continue to work together to provide Ukraine with the military equipment that it needs to defend itself. And we'll continue to stand strong with our NATO allies and we'll continue to stand, stand against Russia's assault on democracy, sovereignty, and the rules-based international order. So thank you, and I look forward to taking a couple of questions. Thank you very much, Secretary Austin, and uh, let me ask the Czech TV. 
Mr. Secretary, just uh, yesterday, your colleague from the American government, uh, Secretary of State uh, Antony Blinken, announced uh, additional help to Ukraine in amount of uh, two billion dollars. First billion goes directly to Ukraine. Second one is for 18 European countries, including the Czech Republic. Uh, can you specify uh, what uh, this aid contains in relation to the Czech Republic? Thank you very much. A poprosím paní ministrině také o reakci. I will ask the Czech Minister for the reaction as well. The Department of State will make uh, announcements uh, in the near future on uh, how those funds uh, will be directed. But I think what this, what, what's important about this announcement is it, it encourages additional investment and in, in modernization, uh, which, is in, which increases in a, interoperability. So we're delighted to see this. Uh, and uh, certainly uh, I know that the countries that will receive uh, that assistance uh, will invest wisely, so we look forward to working with them. Yes, uh, also on behalf of, of the Czech Republic, uh, I, uh, we welcome this decision, and the Czech Republic uh, stands ready, including by the means of uh, its uh, enterprises and private businesses uh, to be involved in uh, continuous supplies of military ma material to Ukraine and also to assist uh, with uh, renovation reconstruction uh, in a post-war effort. Uh, we also stand ready to take part in the maintenance and sustainment of the equipment that is uh, being uh, forwarded to Ukraine. Lee Kaufman, uh, CNN. Yesterday at the Ukraine Defense Contact Group, you said a focus of the meeting was preparing Ukraine for long-term security against Russia. What is the end point of this conflict in your mind? What's the best case scenario for Ukraine by the end of the year and by the end of 2023? Well, I, it's, uh, it's always dangerous to make predictions about, about a, a war or a conflict. Uh, and so I think, uh, again, our goal is to support Ukraine and help it defend its sovereign territory. And in terms of defining, uh, defining uh, final states or outcomes, uh, we know that the Ukrainian leadership uh, will have uh, the strongest voice in that, in that uh, respect. And, and so, uh, our, again, our goal is to continue to support them as a, uh, as a uh, continue to work hard to defend their sovereign territory. And we've all been impressed by what we've seen. Uh, their, their willingness to stand up to a much larger, much stronger force and be effective in their efforts. So we've been inspired by their courage and their commitment. Uh, and, uh, and I think, you know, coming out of the Ukraine uh, Defense Contact Group uh, meeting yesterday, I think we were we continue to be inspired by, by what we see from the international community in terms of a willingness uh, to support Ukraine. You've heard President Biden say, and you've heard me say a number of times, uh, that we're going to support Ukraine for as long as it takes. Uh, and, and I clearly get that, uh, that, that same strong sentiment from uh, the participants of the Ukraine Defense Contact Group. And as you know, you were there yesterday, there were some 50 participants in that group. So this is, this is bigger than NATO. This is an international effort to support Ukraine. So we can't really predict how long things are going to uh, last or what the outcome is going to be. Uh, we can only do what we've done thus far in continuing to support Ukraine so that it can have uh, the strongest uh, hand on the battlefield. And, and if it, uh, when it goes to negotiations, have the strongest hand at the negotiating table. Okay. Let me just add to what Secretary Austin uh, just said, that on behalf of the countries uh, forming the top ten, uh, the, which uh, include the Czech Republic, uh, I can promise on our behalf that uh, we will continue uh, to support Ukraine militarily as well as otherwise. And uh, from the yesterday UFENS, uh, uh, Ukraine Defense Contact Group meeting, uh, we, uh, I have the impression of a strong unity uh, more than ever before. 
TV Prima. And Prima News. Uh, we might see the intensification of relations between the USA and uh, the Czech Republic. Uh, so these bilateral visits uh, are going to be more frequently. And uh, the second question, how far is DCA? Thank you very much. What was the second part of that question? How far is uh, the defense cooperation agreement? How far along is it? Okay. What's the hard monogram? So we've had an, an initial uh, meeting on the defense cooperation agreement, and, uh, and we will uh, have conduct our second meeting later on this month, uh, 21st to the 23rd. And you've heard the, uh, the minister say that, that uh, um, we are both interested in uh, concluding that agreement uh, as quickly as possible, because it will facilitate our, our ability to operate together, and these are the kinds of agreements that we typically uh, negotiate with, uh, with our NATO allies. So again, um, it increases interoperability, uh, it, uh, it facilitates our ability to, uh, to get things done quicker, uh, and I think it's, it's, uh, it will provide benefit for both of us. In terms of our relationship, uh, you know, my goal, my personal goal is to make sure that that we take this very strong uh, bilateral relationship and work every day to make it even stronger. And uh, you know, I have been thoroughly impressed by uh, what I've seen from the Czech Republic's military and its leadership uh, in terms of uh, being able to get things done and being able to contribute not just to the, to the Ukraine piece, but to, uh, to a number of issues and operations uh, around the globe. Our goal, our goal is the same, and I can say on behalf of the Czech Republic uh, that uh, my colleagues uh, from the MOD and the Czech Armed Forces have already taken part uh, in the meetings that move the DCA agreement forward, and we concurred with Secretary Austin that we will do our best to bring uh, the DCA to conclusion uh, as soon as possible, and I will appreciate uh, if uh, Secretary Austin could uh, uh, visit the Czech Republic next time, so perhaps that we can sign the agreement in Prague or in Washington, D.C. Uh, to have another opportunity to move our co cooperation forward because uh, we uh, see one another uh, on a regular basis uh, in NATO defense ministerial meetings and we are also in the uh, Rammstein uh, Ukraine defense contact group so we have an excellent uh, cooperation and I highly appreciate that and I would like to thank very much to Secretary Austin for his open attitude to the Czech Republic. Back. To, uh, to Prague to sign the agreement? I accept. <laughs> Thank you, Madam. Thank you, too. Thank you. Uh Thank you. Uh, and the last, the very last question. Uh, hello, uh, Mr. Secretary, Mrs. Secretary. Thank you so much for being here. Um, so, uh, over the last couple of days, we've heard from you uh, and we've heard from uh, the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, General Milley, on how effectively and responsibly uh, Ukraine is using Western-supplied weapons, particularly HIMARS. Given that, and, and everything you've said today about uh, the necessity of those and their effectiveness, uh, why is there still reluctance to give Ukraine longer-range rockets like ATACMS that they've said they need as part of their counteroffensive? Uh, and uh, for Minister Chenehorova, uh, your government has been a very stable supporter of Ukraine. Uh, there have been protests over the last couple of days challenging that support, and there is a presidential election approaching. How confident are you that uh, the government of the Czech Republic will be able to continue a policy of support of Ukraine through uh, 2023 and beyond? Thank you. Hey, Pat, thanks for your question. Uh, as you've heard me say on a number of occasions, you know, I am in constant communication with Minister Reznikov, the Minister of Defense, about uh, how the fight is going, about the resources that they need to, uh, to be successful in their efforts. Uh, and uh, in that communication and things like the Ukraine Defense Contact Group uh, meetings, which you attended yesterday, have enabled us to a really speed a lot of uh, capability uh, to the Ukrainians in a very short period of time, and that capability 
has, uh, has been effective. And to the point that you just made, uh, the HIMARS using the Gimler's uh, rockets have been extraordinary in terms of uh, enabling the Ukrainians to, uh, to service the targets uh, that they need to service inside of Ukraine. And so they've used those munitions uh, and things like harm missiles uh, to begin to shape the battle space in such a manner that they are changing the, di the uh, dynamics on the battlefield. So we see success in, in Kyrgyzstan now. We see some success in, uh, in Kharkiv. Uh, and, uh, and so that's very, very encouraging. But it's not just about one particular uh, weapon or weapon system. Pat, it's about how you integrate these systems and how you integrate the efforts of, uh, of various elements in the inventory to create effects that provide advantage to the Ukrainians. And we're beginning to see that. And, and so uh, I, think, uh, I think they have... Uh, they have great capability. They're using it, it the right way, and we'll stay engaged and make sure that uh, we're giving them what they what they need to be successful. Thanks. Určitě uh, si certainly from the uh, from the protest demonstration that took part uh, that took place on Saturday, uh, the lesson learned for the Czech government is that uh, we need to have a better communication about the energy crisis uh, to explain to the people what has happened uh, that Putin Putin attacked Ukraine and what is how uh, is, uh, uh, how he m mitigates uh, uh, the countries concerning the discontinuation of gas supplies and the uh, growth of energy prices. This is a homework for the Czech government uh, to improve communication. Uh, we have no changes uh, whatsoever in the uh, foreign policy of our country. And uh, from this place, I would like to thank to the president, uh, whom we will visit with Secretary Austin later on, uh, that uh, his foreign policy on the Putin's aggression of Ukraine is uh, completely identical to the policy exercised by our government, that he condemned uh, the aggression and as the commander-in-chief of the armed forces, uh, the president uh, had expressed uh, a full support uh, of the government of the Czech Republic and he supports the policy that we exercise on Ukraine. and. Uh, I would like to use the statement of uh, by the by the Czech president uh, that there are no negotiations with terrorists. Uh, there is only fighting with the terrorists. Uh, unquote. Uh, so this is uh, uh, we have a pro NATO and strong policy, and it will uh, continue that way. And after the change. Uh, of the president and there will be presidential elections coming. Uh, I don't expect any changes. Any candidates uh, having a good chance of becoming the president of the Czech Republic uh, in the question of uh, uh, NATO membership, uh, membership uh, in the European Union have the same, uh, basically the same positions and I don't think anybody have to be afraid of change us changing the course. Well, I'm afraid that's uh, what we have time for, so uh, thank you, Madam Minister. Thank you, Mr. Secretary.